Hi, I'm Tommy of Indie Tom Tips, and today I'm going to show you how to restore your old shutters without removing them from your house. You see this dull, chalky looking substrate on this piece of plastic? It can be made to look new again in just a few easy steps. And it's as simple as thoroughly cleaning the shutters and masking off around the shutters and using Krylon clear coat paint. Testing the shutters before you start. Some years ago, I noticed that when I wet down the shutters with water, my dull shutters looked new again. The unfortunate thing was, after the shutters dried, they turned dull again. So I thought to myself, how could I have the look of new shutters without having to buy new ones? Replacing shutters like these can be costly. A two pack of shutters like these could be as much as $30 to $40. These shutters are about 10 years old. About five years after I bought them, they turned dull. But I sprayed them with Krylon clear coat spray and they look new again. Even though they've lasted through a half decade of freezing winters and scorching summers, they've stood the test of time with Krylon paint. Now let's compare the old shutters that I never restored. Ryan, my camera guy, thanks for joining me. Follow me around the back, I'll meet you in a minute and we'll start the process on how to clean the shutters prior to restoring them with Krylon paint. Ryan. So let's see what steps are needed to prepare the shutters prior to spraying on the clear coat paint. Step one, bees may want to attack you while you're doing the restoration process. So eliminate bees and wasps and other critters that may have built nests and live behind the shutters by using an insect aerosol spray like this. Step two, I found a real easy way to remove the dirt and debris from the vinyl shutters and from the side of the vinyl on the house. And that's by mixing a one third solution of bleach and two thirds mixture of water. Again, when you're cleaning the vinyl, you want to move out at least a foot on the vinyl of the shutters because you're going to tape paper to the side of the shutters and you want that paper to stick with the tape. I mentioned earlier that you should use some type of a bug spray behind the shutters to kill bees and wasps and to eliminate nests. And now I'm spraying the bleach solution behind the shutter to break down those nests. Remove any loose dirt and debris, get along the sides. And you know, if they're really dirty, you could use a scrub brush. Usually the bleach and water breaks it down fairly well and then rinse it off with a garden hose or pressure washer. Now it's time to rinse away those dead bugs and mud nests that are behind your shutters. Permit the shutters and surrounding areas to dry for about an hour. Now that the shutters are clean and dry, there's a couple more things you have to consider before you start spraying. Number one is the weather and the temperature. See the sun here? It's only been here about 20 minutes. But if the sun has been beaten on here for hours and hours, this shutter would be too hot to spray. And if you spray on a very hot surface, the paint will dry too quickly and won't adhere properly. It's better that you spray two to three hours before the sun gets there so it can dry in the 15 minute time span that the paint is designed for. Also, Make sure that the temperature outside is between 60 degrees and 80 degrees and that there's minimal wind and no rain is in the forecast. Step three, after the shutters are dry, use a different clean cotton cloth to wipe down the shutters because you're gonna use an alcohol mixture in water to remove any residue. I always use things like this. They work really well and they don't leave any lint behind. Don't tell my wife she does the laundry. Remember, when done correctly, this is a professional restoration that will last more than five years. But before you begin spraying, read the back label of the can. Follow the directions. Shake the can thoroughly. 
You shake the can until you start to feel the paint moving inside the can, and then most importantly, when you start to hear the steel ball moving around inside. Once you hear the steel ball moving, shake it for an additional two minutes. Once the paint is mixed properly, it will adhere correctly to the plastic surface. What's great about Krylon paint is that it has an adjustable spray head that allows you to spray vertically or horizontally. Unlike other spray paints, Krylon has the best spray pattern because it allows you to shoot paint in a rectangular fashion, almost like using a magic paintbrush. Remember, preparation is everything. If you don't prep right, you don't take the time to do it right, you're wasting your time. Taping off and masking. Tape tightly against the vinyl wall areas that surround the shutters. Tape around the top, the bottom, and the sides of the shutters using blue painter's tape like this. This type of tape adheres well to the siding and professional painter's tape is easy to peel off when the paint is dry. Make sure you firm the tape down with your finger so it adheres properly to the house. Also, you want to make sure that when you wash this vinyl that you cleaned enough of the vinyl by at least a foot because if the vinyl is dirty and you try to put tape on it, it won't stick to it. It'll peel off. It'll drive you crazy. I was talking about using underwear earlier. I wasn't trying to be funny, but it's made of a good cotton and it won't leave lint behind. And uh, I use alcohol that's at least 70% isopropyl. And uh, I rub down the shutters and it removes fingerprints or residue, anything that leaves behind some type of an oil, which would prevent your paint from sticking properly. It dries real quickly, as you can see. We're in the sun, but we haven't been out here too long because we don't want the shutters to get too hot. And it's only about 75 degrees outside, so that's a perfect temperature. After you tape all the way around the shutters, I suggest you protect the surface area around the shutters by adding some masking paper like this. Cut one foot wide lengths and tape them all the way around the shutters. I'm gonna climb up the ladder now and tape this alongside of the blue tape. When you're taping, use the straight edge all the way up to the top of the shutter. And when you're taping, make sure you don't go flush up against the shutter, but you leave enough room to actually overlay the tape on the tape that you placed on the side earlier so it has something to adhere to. But here's the whole reason of using a clear coat spray. If you do get overspray on the house, it's okay because it's transparent. I'm using a satin clear coat, which means it's kind of shiny, but not as shiny as gloss. Test spray the paint button. Test the can by giving it two or three quick bursts. It's a good idea to wear a mask. Some people think they can hold their breath. What happens is, is you wind up breathing this aerosol, gets in your lungs, gets in your eyes. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the head horizontally. Spray and release, spray and release. Spray the side. I'm gonna focus on this area. Spray, release, spray, release. Going against the grain, keeping the wet edge. I'm not spraying too close or too much, otherwise the paint will run. I'm not trying to coat it all in one shot. If I miss a little area like in here, it doesn't matter, I'll pick it up, keeping the wet edge. Now I'm going with the grain. Pick it up, down. Keep the spray can about six to eight inches away from the area that you are spraying. Applying too much paint at one time will cause it to run. If you're too far away, it will go on dry and be dull. All right, we're gonna let that dry. 
and they're going to move on to the other side. But in this instance, I'm not going to use paper to protect the sides. Again, because I'm using a clear coat and it's like a semi-gloss, it's called a satin coat. If I get a little overspray on the sides, it won't matter because it's transparent. See, I'm staying real focused, real tight. I'm shooting in this area and there's virtually no overspray even on the tape. One of the beauties of using a clear coat, I'm gonna adjust it horizontally. You want to make sure when you're spraying or before you begin spraying that this spray tip is not at your face. Make sure you're always looking before you start spraying. It's interesting. One can of paint like this, which is less than six dollars, would save you a fortune in replacing shutters. Hey, if you like this video, please share it with your friends other people who you know who could benefit from restoring the shutters without replacing them. The key is, is getting your shutters clean and dry. I'm gonna let this dry, I'm gonna move on to the other side. Again, if it were real windy out here, the spray would be getting all over the place. It'd be spraying back in my face, getting on the vinyl of the house. Imagine if I was using a red vinyl spray. I mean, Krylon makes great paints. You could buy a red vinyl color like this and coat it and have it look perfect, but then again, you might have to take them off. This spot here is a pressure ding. It's a result of bending plastic. I think this happened years ago when I put a ladder against here and caused an indentation and actually ruined the plastic there. But overall, the shutters are looking brand new. Now I'm gonna do the other side. You can see, here, there's virtually no overspray even on that tape because I'm keeping it tight. And if there is overspray, you don't see it on the house. Okay, these guys are done. I'm gonna let them dry. The pin over here, Ryan. There's the shutters that I did about five years ago. They've stood the test of time because I used the right paint. So here we are, we're done. It's been about 20 minutes and I removed the paper. It looks great. For less than a $6 investment, this Krylon clear coat satin paint saved me $40 so I didn't have to replace two shutters. I'm Tommy from Indie Tom Tips and keep an eye out for my next video when I'll show you how to build an awesome fire pit for less than $200. Thanks for watching.